Chapter 2. Chakra. Preamble. At this time, many gods are coming to the assembly and taking their seats. Chakra, chief of gods, with 40,000 gods of the 33, the four world guardians, with 20,000 gods belonging to the retinue of the four great kings, Brahma, ruler of this world system, with 10,000 gods belonging to the company of Brahma, and 5,000 gods of the pure abode. And yet, and yet, the might of the Buddha with his majesty and authority surpasses even the splendor of these gods. I reward for the deeds these have done here, even in the past. Chakra. These many thousands of gods, Subhuti, have come to this assembly and taken seats. As we want to hear about perfect wisdom from the holy Subhuti, and to listen to his advice to the bodhisattvas, to his instruction and admonition, how these bodhisattvas stand in perfect wisdom, how to train in it, how one devotes oneself to it. Sabuti, let me now explain it to you, through the Buddha's might, majesty, and authority. The gods, not yet aspiring to full enlightenment, should do so. Any, however, being certain to have got safely out of this world, for example, the Arhats having reached their last birth, and thinking to have done with it all, are unfit for full enlightenment, as these are not willing to go, from compassion, back into birth and death. And why? The flood of birth and death hems these ones in. Incapable of repeated births, these ones are unable to aspire to full enlightenment. And yet, these may still aspire to full enlightenment, and I confirm such as these also. I do not obstruct their wholesome root for one should uphold distinguished dharmas above all others. The Lord. Well said, Subhuti, you well encourage bodhisattvas. Subhuti now says to the Lord, We are grateful to the Lord, not ungrateful, for the Lord, in presence of Tathagatas, leads for our sake the holy life with enlightenment as his view. Even as he definitely develops bodhisattva realization, as being dedicated to a thought of enlightenment, Disciples still instruct and admonish him in these perfections, and by his coursing herein is revealing utmost cognition to and for beneficence of unlimited beings. So also do we help, champion, aid, and sustain bodhisattvas, as these bodhisattvas we help, champion, aid, and sustain soon come to know full enlightenment. 2. How to stand in emptiness or the perfection of wisdom. So, now Subhuti says to Chakra, Listen now, Kaushika, and attend well as I teach you how a bodhisattva stands in perfect wisdom. Through standing in emptiness, one stands in perfection of wisdom. Armed with great armor, the bodhisattva thus develops, so one does not take one's stand on any of these. Not on form, feeling, perception, impulses, consciousness. Not on eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. Not on forms, sounds, smells, tastes, touchables, mind objects, not on eye consciousness, etc. Until we come to not on mind consciousness. Until we come to not on the elements, earth, water, fire, wind, ether, consciousness. Not on the pillars of mindfulness, right efforts, roads to psychic power, faculties, powers, limbs of enlightenment, limbs of the path. Not on the fruits of the stream winner, once returner never returner or arhatship, not on pragyika buddhahood, nor on buddhahood. One does not take one's stand on the idea, this is form, this is feeling, etc., to this is buddhahood. One does not take one's stand on any ideas like form, feeling, perception, impulse, or consciousness, is permanent or impermanent, form, etc., is ease or ill, form, etc., is self or not self, form, etc., is lovely or repulsive, or even that form, etc., is empty or apprehended as something. One does not take one's stand on any notion, such as the fruits of the holy life derive their dignity from something called unconditioned, or a stream winner is worthy of gifts and will be reborn seven times at the most, or a once returner is worthy of gifts and, as one has not yet quite realized through to any end, one makes an end after ill after one has once more come into this world. Or, a never-returner is worthy of gifts, and, without once more returning to this world, realizes nirvana elsewhere. Or, an arhat is worthy of gifts, and just here in this very existence will win nirvana in the realm of nirvana, leaving nothing behind. Or, a pratyeka buddha is worthy of gifts, and will win nirvana after rising above the level of a disciple, but without having attained any level of buddha. 
or even a Buddha is worthy of gifts and will win nirvana in the Buddha nirvana, in the realm of nirvana leaving nothing behind. Once one rises above the levels of a common being, of a disciple, and of a Pratyeka Buddha, rots the wheel of countless beings, leads to nirvana countless hundreds of thousands of nayutas of kotis of beings, assures countless beings of discipleship, Pratyeka Buddhahood, and full Buddhahood, is standing on the stage of a Buddha and does a Buddha's work. Even now, on this a bodhisattva does not take one stand. Hereupon, the Venerable Shariputra thought to himself, If even here, upon this, one does not take one's stand, how does one stand and train oneself? The Venerable Sabuti, through the Buddha's might, read his thoughts and said, What do you think, Shariputra? Where does Tathagata stand? Shariputra, Nowhere does Tathagata stand. A Tathagata mind neither seeks nor relies on support. Ones such as these stand neither in what is conditioned, nor in what is unconditioned, nor do these emerge from such. Sabuti. Even so, a bodhisattva stands and trains oneself. One decides this. As the Tathagata does not stand anywhere, nor not stand, nor stand apart, nor not stand apart, so also I stand. Just so one trains oneself. As Tathagata is stationed, so also I stand and train myself. Just so one trains oneself. As the Tathagata is stationed, so do I stand, well in place, as without a place to stand upon. Even so, Shariputra, a bodhisattva stands and trains oneself. As one trains thus, one adjusts oneself to perfection of wisdom, and never ceasing from taking it to heart. 3. The saints and their goal are illusions. So, now here comes this thought to some of the gods in the assembly. What the fairies talk and murmur, we understand this, though mumbled. But Subhuti is just telling us what we do not understand. Subhuti read these thoughts, and he said, Here is no thing to understand, nothing at all to understand, nothing in particular is indicated, nothing in particular is explained. Hereupon the gods thought, May the holy Subhuti enlarge on this, may the holy Subhuti enlarge on this, what the holy Sabuti here explores, demonstrates, and teaches is remoter than remote, subtler than subtle, deep beyond depth. Sabuti read these thoughts and said, No one can attain any fruit of holy life or keep it, from the stream winner's fruit to full enlightenment, unless one patiently accepts this, the elusiveness of Dharma. Now these gods thought, What could one wish any beings to be like who are worthy to listen to the doctrine from the holy Sabuti? Subhuti so read these thoughts and said, These learning doctrine from me, one might wish to be like an illusory magical creation. For these neither hear my words, nor experience the facts which are here and now expressed. Gods, beings like a magical illusion, are these not in truth just an illusion? Subhuti, so like a magical illusion are these beings like a dream. For not two different things are magical illusion, and beings are dreams and beings. Any and all objective facts are also like a magical illusion, like a dream. The various classes of saints, from stream winner to Buddhahood, are also like a magical illusion, a dream. Gods. A fully enlightened Buddha also, you say, is like a magical illusion, is like a dream. Buddhahood also, you say, is like a magical illusion, like a dream. Subhuti. Even nirvana, I say, is like a magical illusion, is like a dream. How much more so anything else? Gods, even nirvana, holy Subhuti, you say, is like an illusion, is like a dream. Subhuti, if perchance here could be anything even more distinguished, of such two I say is like an illusion, like a dream. For not two different things are illusion and nirvana, are dreams and nirvana. Hereupon the Venerable Shariputra, the Venerable Purna, son of Maitrayani, the Venerable Mahakoshtila, the Venerable Mahakatyayana, the Venerable Mahakashyapa, and the other great disciples, together with many thousands of bodhisattvas, said, Who, Subhuti, are these grasping this perfect wisdom, as here explained? Hereupon, the Venerable Ananda said to these elders, Bodhisattvas, incapable of falling back, grasp this, or beings, persons reaching sound views, or arhats, in whom the outflows are realized as dried up. Sabuti. 
No one grasps this perfect wisdom as here explained. For example, explained in such a way as really no explanation at all, for no dharma at all is being indicated, lit up, or communicated. So here too is not even one grasping it. 4. Chakra's Flowers Now this thought comes to chakra. Let me now, in order to do worship to this discourse on dharma, which is being taught by the holy sabuti, conjure up some flowers and scatter them over the holy sabuti. Chakra conjured up flowers and scattered them over the venerable sabuti. The venerable sabuti thought to himself by way of reply, These flowers, which now appear among the gods of the thirty-three, I had not noticed before. These flowers, which Chakra scatters, are magical creations. They are not issued from trees, shrubs, or creepers. These flowers, which Chakra is scattering, are mind-made. Chakra replied, These flowers are not issuing forth at all, for here are really no flowers, whether they issue forth from mind, trees, shrubs, or creepers. So Subhuti now says to him, As you say, Kaushika, these flowers do not issue forth at all, neither from mind, nor from trees, shrubs, or creepers. For this which never issues forth is not a flower. 5. Training and Perfect Wisdom So now the thought occurs to Chakra, chief of gods, profoundly wise, surely is the holy Sabuti, as he explains this merely nominal existence of all separate things, and yet even does not bring into conflict with any norm of truth, but enlarges on such, and quite simply expounds it. Chakra now says to the venerable Sabuti, So it is. The Bodhisattva so trains oneself in this insight, as Holy Sabuti points out. Sabuti, truly one so dedicated does. As one thus trains, one does not train to achieve any results of a stream winner, nor in any other fruits of the holy life, even up to Buddhahood. For as one trains oneself on any of these stages, one trains oneself in, or as Buddha nature, or toward pure and undifferentiated cognition of all knowledge. And so in the immeasurable and incalculable Buddha dharmas, so in this one trains oneself neither for the increase of form, feeling, perception, impulse, or consciousness, nor yet for their decrease. Neither to appropriate form, nor to let them go. Nor does one train oneself to get a hold of any other dharma, even up to all knowledge, nor to produce one or make one disappear. As one thus trains, a bodhisattva trains in all knowledge, and dedicated thusly, goes forth to all knowledge. Chakra. Does a bodhisattva go forth to all knowledge, even though one does not train oneself to get a hold of any dharmas? Even of all knowledge, nor to produce one or to make one disappear? Sabuti. One such as this does. Chakra now says to Shariputra, How or where does a bodhisattva search for perfect wisdom? Shariputra. In the exposition of the Venerable Sabuti. Chakra. Those who might and on whose authority does the Holy Sabuti teach perfect wisdom? Shariputra. Through the Tathagata's might and on his authority. Sabuti. It is indeed the Tathagata's might, Chakra, by which such perfect wisdom is taught. And as you ask, how or where does a Bodhisattva search for perfect wisdom? The answer is, one should not search for such in form, nor in any other skandhas, nor in anything which is other than form, or other than any other skandhas, because perfect wisdom is not one of these skandhas, nor yet other than these. 6. The Infinitude of Perfect Wisdom Chakra this perfection of wisdom, Subhuti, is a great perfection, unlimited, measureless, infinite. Subhuti, so it is, and why? Perfect wisdom is great, unlimited, measureless, and infinite, because form, feelings, etc. are so. Hence, one does not settle down in any such conviction that this is a great perfection and unlimited perfection, a measureless perfection, or an infinite perfection. This is how and why perfect wisdom is a great perfection unlimited, measureless, and infinite. Perfect wisdom is an infinite perfection because objects, as well as individual beings, are infinite. Perfect wisdom is an infinite perfection because one cannot get at the beginning, middle, or end of any object fact, since as, since, as a dharma such have no own being. Moreover, perfect wisdom is infinite perfection as all objective facts are endless and boundless and any beginning, middle, or end are not apprehended. 
for one cannot apprehend the beginning, middle, and end of form, or any such skandhas. In such a way as this, perfect wisdom is infinite perfection, by reason of this infinitude of objects. And further still, any being is endless and boundless, as one cannot get at any beginning, middle, or end. Thus perfect wisdom is infinite perfection by reason of this infinitude of beings. Chakra. How is it, holy Sabuti, this perfect wisdom is an infinite perfection by reason of this infinitude of beings? Sabuti. It is not so because of their exceedingly great number and abundance. Chakra. So, how now, holy Sabuti, is perfect wisdom an infinite perfection by reason of the infinitude of beings? Sabuti. Well, Kashika, what factual entity does the word being denote? Chakra. The word being denotes no dharma or non-dharma. It is a term which is added on to any of this which is really here, as something adventitious, groundless, as no thing in itself, unfounded in any object fact whatsoever. Subhuti. Is herein, by uttering this word being, any being showing up as an ultimate fact? Chakra. No, indeed, holy Subhuti. Subhuti. So, as no being whatsoever is showing up, how is herein an infinitude of these beings? For if any Tathagata with a voice of infinite range, with this deep thunder of a voice, pronounces for eons countless as the sands of the Ganges, this word being, would this Tathagata hereby produce or stop any being whatsoever, either in this past, future, or present? Chakra. No, indeed, holy Sabuti, because any being is pure from beyond, even any beginning, perfectly pure. Subhuti. In this way, also perfect wisdom, is this infinitude of perfection, by reason of this identical infinitude of beings. In this manner, also any infinitude of perfect wisdom can be known from this infinitude of beings. 7. Confirmation. Hereupon these gods around Indra, Brahma, and Prajapati, and these hosts of men and women round the rishis, as well thrice shouted forth in triumph, Hail the Dharma! Hail the Dharma! Hail the Dharma Hood of Dharma! Also these added, Beautifully does Sabuti the Elder even just now indicate, demonstrate, show, and clarify how thusly any Tathagata comes to be manifest. As potential Tathagatas, we henceforth regard any Bodhisattva possessing fullness of this perfection of wisdom, and who here so dwells within. The Lord now speaks. So it is, O gods. So do I. As I met at Tathagata, Dipankara, in the bazaar of Dipavati, the royal city possessed the fullness of this perfection of wisdom. So Dipankara, a Tathagata, predicted one day, I am to be fully enlightened, and said to me, You, young Brahmin, in this future period, after incalculable eons, become a Tathagata, Shakyamuni by name, endowed with knowledge and virtue, well gone, a world-knower, unsurpassed, tamer of beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and people, a Buddha, a blessed Lord. The gods replied, This is wonderful, O Lord, this is exceedingly wonderful. O oh, well gone, how much all knowledge is nourished and promoted in these bodhisattvas, these great beings, by this perfection of wisdom. 